we're here in the Minneapolis Sculpture Garden with poet Ravi Shankar, standing next to an amazing work by Sol Lewitt. Ravi, how did uh, Sol Lewitt come to do the cover of Seamless Matters? Well, um, I actually live in the small town in Connecticut uh, called Chester, right along the banks of the Connecticut River. And when I moved there, I'd heard uh, there were a number of kind of local celebrities in town. Morley Safer lives there, and the poet George Bradley. And Seoul, uh, for a long time, had a place there and also in Italy. And so when I got to town, I just, uh, I just wrote him a little note because I was always a big admirer of his work. And, you know, I didn't think anything of it. And then maybe a couple of weeks later, I got home and on my answering machine, there's this uh, great message and it was from Seoul. And uh, he had gotten my note and uh, he welcomed me to town. And I had mentioned I was a poet and he said he'd be interested in seeing my work. And so he invited me over to his studio. And uh, so I, I went over there and he was uh, very generous and he kind of told me what he was working on and showed me uh, various items uh, in his studio. He had this lovely space, he still does. His uh, widow Carol still lives in that space. And we spent a couple of hours, we had some tea and chatted about all kinds of things. And he, he told me that he would love to see what I was working on. And at that time, I had just started this sequence, which became what is it now in Seamless Matter. And so I sent him the first, I think I had maybe eight to ten poems, and I sent them over to him to, to have a look. And uh, in return, he actually sent me this little uh, watercolor of his, hmm. which I still have at home, which was a really lovely gesture. And, uh, uh, you know, after meeting him, I started working on more of these. and. Uh, and Sol and I got to, to know each other and visited a couple more times and I, I asked him if uh, he would be amenable to, to collaborating with me or doing something for the book and he said uh, that he would be happy to. And in fact, uh, he gave us, for Drunken Boat, a series of his photographs. I mean, he works so sequentially and he had these photographs where he's, he took a, a bowling ball, painted it completely white and then photographed it lit from every different direction. I think there were like 36 and all, so one was like lit from the top, one was like lit from the top and the side, one was not lit at all, and they became these almost luminous celestial bodies, and it was all this white bowling ball. So we published that in Drunken Boat, and uh, I, I continued to work on the sequence, and uh, probably saw Saul a half dozen times or so, uh, and uh, unfortunately, right as I was finishing the book, he passed away. Um, and, but I, I, I still knew that this collection very much uh, was done under the influence of Saul and I wanted to have his work and so I talked to Carol, his, his widow, and she said, yeah, I, I think that would be great and um, why don't you come over to the, uh, the studio and look at some of the prints that we have. Because um, Saul and I hadn't really talked about exactly what we would uh, use for the cover and so I went over there and I saw a number of different pieces and, and the piece that's now on the cover struck me because there's something elemental about it. I mean, it, it, there's almost this sense of kind of primordial movement in the piece. And uh, all, all the poems in Seamless Matter are, of course, uh, about natural and artificial objects and about the act of perception. And I'm hoping that they kind of delve into the pith and essence of the things I'm describing. And something about Saul's work was so vibrant and seemed like something, when you look at something through a microscope, um, that that is the kind of texture and fabric, the fibrous texture of uh, the world. And so that was what I chose. And I, I got uh, the blessing of Soul's estate. And they were very kind and happy to, to do this collaboration. And, uh, and I, I really feel like I, I might not have done, certainly, the book that I have now if I hadn't met Soul. So I'm, I'm really grateful to, to him. And, you know, I mean, he didn't know me from, I mean, I was just a, a young poet in town. And I, I think it was just so kind of him to to invite me over and to spend some time with him when he was already an you know, internationally renowned artist. So I'm really quite touched by that. Uh, and so that's kind of how the, the, the project came into being.